This is one of the best days ever. So as you can see behind me, you'll see in a second, I've got a pod of humpback whales. I was in the water with one last week. That one came to me. one of the most mesmerizing things, especially just being on my little tinny, seeing a heap of humpback whales blowing out and hanging around and jumping out of the water, breaching. They are easily one of the most beautiful creatures there is in the ocean and probably in the world for that matter. I so badly want to get back in. I'm about a kilometer away from where I might go fish or dive. It's pretty deep water, but I sort of want to go hit it anyway. There's every chance, because there's more whales out there, there's every chance more are going to come catch up with me, which would be pretty bloody awesome. I'll try to get better footage of it this time than what I did last week. God, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> I've decided that these whales are way too beautiful for me to waste an opportunity like this. So I'm going to send my drone up right now. You guys are going to see it go up. I'm going to switch the camera. I'm going to get some footage of these guys doing their thing because they've been going around in circles just having a fat time. So I want to see what it looks like from the top and then we'll move on. So any second now, this goes up. We'll have a look at what these guys are up to. Better keep moving now, get to the next spot. We'll try to get some more fish. On rod and reel, I've got the jig there. If that doesn't work, we'll um, keep trawling around the back and we'll jump back in the water. The day's clearing up again now. Skies blue again, everything's beautiful. This is beautiful. I've got beautiful fish in the fish bag. We're gonna do a mad cook up after this. This is the Pilbara. <laughs> Now for anybody who does want to get into spearfishing, I'm more than happy to answer any questions for you. I don't think I would have gotten into it if I didn't move up north, but now that I'm doing it up here and I'm learning up here and I'm getting more confident up here, I definitely think I'll be able to do it down south, but I probably wouldn't have wanted to start down south. Mainly because of the whites. Might sound ridiculous to say, but great whites, the thought of them just coming in without giving you a chance to negotiate yourself out of the water. That is a pretty scary aspect of diving, but otherwise all is well up here. So, let me gun here. 
I've got my mask here. I'm going to put baby soap inside of here. This is my GoPro going on my head. I'm going to jump in the water. You guys are going to see what I'm seeing. We're going to shoot a couple fish. I'm not too stressed about what I get today. I'm not going for any PBs, but if I see something good, we're definitely going to go for it. And then we'll uh, find our way out of here from there and we'll go cook up a nice big mean feed. I'll see you in the water. That's my first fish. As soon as I jump in, black spot tusk fish, aka blue bone. Not a bad little start, not massive by any means, but about 50 centimeters. There was another one of these down there. If I can get the other one, I'll be very, very happy. But um, yeah, good stone shot, pinned it straight against the reef there. It was dead the moment the spear went through it, which was good. Always helps for not attracting sharks too. What I'm a little bit bummed out about is the cloud cover that's just come over. I wasn't expecting this at all today, so it's a little bit cloudy now, or very overcast, I should say, which means the visibility is sort of shot. It's gonna make things a little bit more difficult. It feels a lot more sharky down there, but that's all good. Now, another thing I will say is I'm gonna play the noise for you right now with the GoPro clip, and you're gonna see it. I'm gonna put it on replay three times so you're ready. That noise right there, when you pull the trigger, that's the number one thing that's gonna bring sharks into you. Your sharks are at all familiar with spear fishermen and that noise, as soon as they hear that a few times and they get to relate that noise to fish being dead, bleeding, and on a spear, ready to be taken, they come in on that. So a lot of the time you won't see any sharks at all. You start pulling the trigger once or twice, they start to roll in because it really travels a long way underwater. You can hear your mates doing it from 50 meters away. So now that I've pulled the trigger once, I've got this one, I'll get in, I'll pull the trigger once or twice more, I think, and then we'll move spot. We'll see what else we can find.
right, so I'm out of the water on that spot now. There was a lot less going on there than I would have liked. Those bombies were holding a lot of small coral trout, a few parrotfish, but no bluebone whatsoever that I could see, and that's really what I was after, bluebone or jacks. So rather than scout around this ground, because it's a little bit choppy-ish here, which is what I was saying earlier is actually quite good for me, I'm gonna throw this out behind me now, and I'm just gonna circle around these little islands here, have a bit of a trawl around, the edge of this one, I'll trawl for about 20 minutes. If I hook onto something, I'll turn the camera on and show you guys. If not, I'm going to zoot over to one more spot that I wouldn't mind diving if the visibility is good when I get there. And then if it is, I'll jump in and then we'll get this cook up going, we'll cook some lunch, have a bit of a yarn, and we'll go from there. Just like that, I'm on. First fish. <laughs> oh, good, it's not massive. I thought it was going to be big because of the way it was dragging, but it's not big at all. Which kind of sucks as I was hoping it's a spango, but. Or spanute, I should say. I wonder what this is. It's pretty much gone limp. Might see the boat in a run, but. Oh. Tell you what, good feeling to have a rod. <laughs> Give us some line again, but unfortunately I didn't have the camera going when it was happening. Please be a fish. This cannot be seaweed or something. It's got to be a fish. What on earth have I got? Oh, here it goes. Go. Definitely a fish. Might be a trevally. Queenie. Hey. Oh no. It is a Mackie. <laughs> oh, you're joking me. That's got to be one of the easiest fights I've ever had though. Oh no. Oh, it's a Spanish too. You are joking me, man. Where? Well, well, well. Yeah. Yes. Oh, no bloody way. No bloody way. So I switched to this Halco Max. These things are awesome. This is what I caught my first ever dolly on. They sink and they just change to the, they alter the depth depending on how deep, I mean how fast you're driving. So if you're just going to slow trawl, these guys stay pretty deep. And they rattle, they get a lot of attention. And I've just caught my first ever Spanish mackerel and it's legal too. There you go. <laughs> That's my first ever Spanish mackerel I've ever caught in my life on my own, just like that. Trawling behind the boat, out where I said I thought I would get them, I actually managed to get one. I can't believe it. Pretty good little size too, this one. I'm pretty happy with that, I would admit. I mean, it'd be nice to get a big one, but at least he's in, he's legal. Beautiful colors on him. I'm absolutely chuffed with that. So drive down to a beach and we'll actually get this cook up underway. Because no matter what happens now, I'm super stoked with today. I can fully see this happening just like it did with my red core pizza that I did a few episodes back when I tilted on too much of an angle and I dropped it. So I don't want that to happen today. But there's the coral trout inside of a wrap. 
I'm going to try and wrap this up in open air. I have no idea how I'm going to do this. There you go, that actually worked out all right. I know that I'm going to be excited to get this episode out. I haven't filmed in forever. I've just been busy working. I'm, um, I'm in the process of buying a house at the moment in Karatha, putting roots down here. I've decided I love it that much, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm going through all the rigmarole of basically working, saving money, putting that away, buying the house. I have purchased one. I'm um, just waiting for the sediment and stuff to go through and then that's me. I'm going to be here for quite some time. Now, as some of you would know if you followed my channel for a while, I've always loved travelling and getting around. I'm moving around different places but I've never really felt like somewhere really felt like home to me but this place I definitely do and it's easy to see why. If you're ever going to cook up a trout, definitely scale it and keep the skin. So it's a good way to make use of the whole fish. And then you kind of get like a, a side dish out of it, I suppose. It's just like eating fish and chips. Except if you don't want to do chips, you don't have potatoes with you. You make the chips out of the trout skin. Fried up. Nice and crispy. And you honestly will never look back. Anyway, I'm gonna get this packed up, get back in the boat. Last week. Last week. Last week.